Market to Market is everywhere you are. Subscribe to Market to Market on YouTube, find us on the PBS video app to stream on demand, and add our three podcasts on your favorite podcasting app. Chippewa Valley Bean Company, the world's largest processor and exporter of dark red kidney beans, initially didn't worry too much about the transportation disruptions tied to the COVID pandemic. Company executives assumed it would be a short-term problem. But when a year had passed and their 75,000-square-foot Menominee, Wisconsin warehouse was almost overflowing with Midwest-grown kidney beans they couldn't ship to their customers, they became increasingly concerned. We have probably 20 loads to bag yet, but I'm out of pallets, so I have to ship before we can bag those. Traditionally, the company's main export route was trucks to the Twin Cities, rail cars to the port of Montreal, and ships to final destinations in Europe and other points around the globe. Delays during the pandemic's first year were caused by labor strikes and work slowdowns at the Montreal port, by a shortage of shipping containers, and, after Chippewa Valley Bean tried to get product out of East Coast U.S. ports, by a months-long backlog in Chicago's already overwhelmed container rail depots. By the time two years had passed, the situation had gotten worse. The fall 2021 crop of dark red, light red, and white kidney beans was arriving from the fields of Wisconsin, North Dakota, and Minnesota, threatening to flood an already full warehouse. Now the container shortage is just really, really bad. We cannot locate containers at all. So we had a freight forwarder that worked with us and we just started bringing containers out of Chicago ourselves. Chippewa paid for that out of our own pocket. Okay, we're loading containers. Now we think we've got that problem solved. Wrong. CP rail, because there weren't enough loaded containers coming into Minneapolis, they weren't taking containers back out. Brown says they assumed the limits on containers leaving the Twin Cities on Canadian Pacific Railway, which began around Thanksgiving 2021, would ease after the holiday rush. They didn't. It just slowed down. It slowed down through the first of the year. And it got to the point where CP was only taking 100 containers a week, 20 containers a day out of the entire Minneapolis area. You know, that's everybody in North Dakota, that's Minnesota, that's Western Wisconsin, that's Iowa. I'm like, come on, folks, what are you thinking? We can't live like this. Finally, Chippewa Valley Bean found a stopgap solution that may provide long-term relief for other Midwest companies facing similar shipping barriers. That solution came in the form of the Port of Duluth Superior, a place not previously known as a significant container exporting location. Chippewa Valley Bean Shipment was our first export container move. We've, we've certainly exported other commodities, but not containerized. The Duluth Seaway Port Authority, a public entity working with a private warehousing company under the shared name Duluth Cargo Connect, had already spent about five years and $35 million on infrastructure improvements that would mean better rail-to-water service. They saw an opportunity to leverage those improvements by seeking federal approval to handle larger dedicated container ships for importing and exporting. Cleveland had already been grandfathered in because they were doing a unique container program over there. No other port on the Great Lakes side of the U.S. was set up for that. We went ahead and completed that regulatory step uh, and added an inspection station here at our facility with U.S. Customs. That approved Duluth to be the second port on the Great Lakes to handle containers. Maybe a few years ago it didn't matter as much because supply chain was pretty smooth in the world, right? But for what shippers are going through today, it's significant because we can offer an alternative. A company called Nexus 360 had already been working on the development of field-to-customer shipping containers that will control humidity and temperature while tracking location. Nexus 360 accelerated its modified container preparations once company founder Dennis Papp realized they might be able to help solve Chippewa's shipping problems using the Duluth port. Between him and then you take a Chippewa Valley Bean that was really willing to try something new in their supply chain, you coupled them with what we did to get regulatory-wise set up for it. It was the perfect recipe of everybody working together to create something new and different. 
An overdue shipment of 194 containers of kidney beans went out of Duluth on the 453-foot-long Nunalik in May this year. I would say everybody was busy, but at the same time, too, there was, a, there was quite a bit of pride in seeing that happen, no doubt about it. Chippewa expects a repeat shipment out of Duluth or Cleveland this fall. Going forward, Lamb says they don't expect to compete at scale with the much larger coastal ports, especially considering that the St. Lawrence Seaway's winter ice means the route to the ocean is closed two to three months each year. But officials with the ports of Duluth and Cleveland hope to serve regional customers like Chippewa Valley Bean when they are faced with a warehouse full of product with nowhere to go. We're not going to be in L.A. Long Beach. You know, we're, we're just not. We're not going to be a Seattle Tacoma, and that's okay. So we have a unique uh, niche service that we can offer here that's probably a higher-end service, more customer-friendly than what you'd get at going through a bigger coastal port. We don't expect anybody or want anybody to take all their eggs, all their products they're moving, and put them in one basket with us. But we can be that relief valve. We can be that alternate route. Our Great Lake ports were not being utilized as much as they might be able to. And I think crisis in transportation and other things bring different solutions. And that's what we're seeing, whether it's Cleveland being able to ship out of that area to go into Europe or whether it's um, Port of Duluth. I'm hopeful that that will continue on because we've got this whole pressure cooker of transportation issues and it's one more viable route that relieves some of that pressure. For Market to Market, I'm Colleen Bradford-Krantz.